Sargon Akkad, also known as Carl, has millions and millions of followers on YouTube and other platforms. He's also been deplatformed some places, and he's with us right now in studio to just talk about the world, the place it's in right now, and where he thinks these revolutions of populism versus, um, well, what would you call it, globalism are going. Thanks for coming to the studio with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having Been me. a fan of your work for a while. Thank you. Same. So, uh, first off, uh, your handle, Sargon, where does that name come from? Uh, it comes from a Middle Eastern emperor. Um, I didn't, I didn't uh, think anything was ever going to come of anything when I first started uploading videos to YouTube. And so I, I just used it because it was the tags that I used when I was playing video games online. Uh, completely inauspicious, no thought put into it whatsoever. And if I could go back and redo it, I'd just use my real name. Well, it's good to have you here with us. Thank you. Uh, you were on uh, yesterday, did a great job with Owen Schroyer, covered some of the big breaking news, but commercial free here right now. What do you want to get into today? What What's front and center for you? Um, well, at the moment, I'm doing a part two to the Jeffrey Epstein uh, video I just did. Uh, these are taking quite a lot of time because there's a lot of stuff happening and a lot of strange information coming out about the uh, the whole case. The the fact that he had uh, broken bones in his uh, throat that were broken in such a way that is to indicate that it was most likely strangling rather than choking on a, a paper-thin um, bit of a sheet from his bunk bed. Uh, that that's particularly interesting to me because, and especially his his uh, cellmate was moved out of the cell the day before he died, and all of this. It's it's all very very suspect. And but we're hearing from the new attorney general that oh, it probably was suicide. I mean, yes. I find that very very suspicious when uh, Epstein told people that uh, that the previous cellmate had tried to basically kill him. He told people that he feared for his life. And then to just have the media say it's a conspiracy theory out of the gates uh, to question it, that just doesn't hold water. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they have much room to call people conspiracy theorists after the whole Russia thing. But I agree. I agree. It, there is definitely something to this. And there is definitely, it's definitely easier for them if it just goes away. Where do you at a gut level, and I know you're not, a guy that even theorizes, you just go with mm. the facts. That you pride yourself on that, eloquently so. But I mean, gut level, if, if you had to just dead reckon, where is this going? I mean, I see it as another bellwether of the collapse of confidence in the system. I think that, I mean, personally, if I would speculate or hypothesize, I would suggest that Epstein was using his particular interest in sex trafficking young girls in order to create a very deep network of connections with very powerful and high profile people uh, including people like Matt Groening and uh, from the Simpsons uh, and things like this um in in I mean I don't know why he was doing it but it seems that that's the sort of thing that he was facilitating well I happen to know what he was doing I mean he was heading up as one of the main promoters of this eugenics institute that was set up by the Rockefellers and others inside uh, the Albert Einstein Institute. Right. And a lot of this, I covered it 10, 12 years ago when it came out in ABC News, London Guardian, uh, that he was in there quarterbacking and organizing these meetings that were, quote, creating an alternative world government for depopulation. Behind closed doors on this New York campus, a secret gathering of some of the world's most powerful people. Gates, Buffett, Bloomberg, Winfrey. Together with others at the meeting, including George Soros, Ted Turner, David Rockefeller, they're worth more than $125 billion. That much money, that much power around one table. It begs the question, what were they doing? What were they scheming? The new Superman and Wonder Woman. The super rich friends. Not fighting bad guys, but fighting for good nonetheless. I haven't been able to find anything about that, but there was a report that he apparently wished to seed the human race with his genes. Yes. Which is particularly strange. Well, after we're off air today, yeah, and, and since this isn't live, I, I may just add it in post. Yeah. Uh, we have the articles out of The Guardian, ABC News, you name it, uh, where the group that he was one of the main heads of was organizing an alternate world government and a plan for depopulation. Bill, Bill and Melinda Gates went. Right. A, a bunch of other people would meet. Uh, Oprah Winfrey. Well, the, the population control is something that they are concerned about because of climate change, isn't it? They think that this is, I mean, and they're not wrong either. That it's, um, it's creating climate change as far as they're concerned. Um, 
Uh, but this is this is not in Western countries. Western countries are are on on form with this sort of thing because we're actually concerned about it. But places like China and India just don't care, and there's no way that we can compel them to care about the amount of pollutants they're putting out of the atmosphere. So, I watched just last night an old like three four year old documentary by RT Documentaries that was showing shipwrecking uh, in India and how these people are treated worse than slaves 500 years ago and how they're paid three dollars a day no health care no nothing it was just nightmarish yeah it's um that's the neoliberal corporate consensus for you it's okay to exploit these people in foreign countries as long as nike gets to produce shoes at ridiculously cheap prices that colin kaepernick can get offended over how did we as a nation it seems stop caring about slave labor or goods being produced by slaves and then embrace communist China and not care about uh, total surveillance grids. I mean, it just seems like during the Obama era, there seemed to be a point where we went off a cliff where we just didn't even pay lip service to basic Western values anymore. It's quite wild, isn't it? Because after, after Edward Snowden and uh, the rest showed that we were having everything surveilled, everyone just carried on as if it wasn't happening. I mean, it's still going on and no one complains. It just is normal now. It's just part of reality that everything you say on the internet or via phones or anything. I mean, like Facebook the other day was revealed to be transcribing, paying contractors to transcribe voice calls made over Facebook. Why? Well, Paul Watson and I in 2005 found corporate perspectives put out by Google to shareholders hmm. that they were listening over microphones and sending it back to corporate headquarters and then designing advertising programs for people. Yeah. Uh, and, and But we were called conspiracy theorists, even though we had the corporate document directly from them. So see, that's really that that's really old news, but 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 now it's coming out. Now it's coming out that fluoride is causing lower IQs. Now it's coming out that uh, cell phone radiation is giving people cancer. I mean, I think that's all pretty much settled. So the question is, what do you think happens next? Um, I mean, the least scary option is that this is just a marketing ploy because one of the things that people notice and you, you see a lot of people talking about if go, go in front of your alexa or something and start talking about something that you've never mentioned before some weird foreign product or something like that and you'll see it in your facebook recommendations or the adverts you know the the, the tailored advertising so it, it there there definitely is something going on there and oh they is, admit they're doing that well yeah but hopefully it's just for advertising hopefully it's just to try and get money out of you that's that's the least nefarious thing that they could be doing it well for. sure that's that's just the trojan horse itself but it's all really about total power total surveillance and that's why facebook's now saying Whatever you do, even outside of Facebook, we're monitoring it and we will affect your social credit score if you don't uh, behave and do what we want for even stuff you did in the past that we may later change and say is now politically incorrect. Uh, well, yeah, that's what happened to me with Patreon. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't using Patreon when I was uh, arguing with Nazis, incidentally, and that was what got me banned from Patreon. So, yeah, they, they, they are laying claim to your behavior off of their platforms, which is rather terrifying. You brought up Epstein first, and then I kind of took you down a rabbit trail. Yeah. What else on your radar screen? What would you say your core issues are that made you so successful and so famous online and, and, and so loved by a lot of people and then made the left jealous of you? I mean, is it because you were able to convince the left because I wouldn't call you a right winger? Or how would you describe yourself and what are your main tenets? Uh, I'm, a, I'm an English liberal, so I, I guess you'd call me a centrist over here. Um, I think that the right has some things that are correct and the left has some things that are correct. But the, the problem is at the moment, um, the right has has committed to its Republican values, but the left has failed to acknowledge that these are worthy values and they've actually decided that radical left-wing values, uh, socialism and communism, are actually more morally... Uh, more morally superior and so they've they've shifted dramatically to the left there's lots of studies and data that show this and now you've got this chasm in the in, in american politics but politics across the english-speaking world um where the the right and the left the the right is still using the original sort of classically liberal values that our countries are founded on whereas the left has decided that no they're a revolutionary force they don't they don't agree with the right wing values in fact they are white supremacy they are racist and that's because they don't produce the exact equal outcome that the left is looking for 
We're going to play this clip right now, and when we come back, I'll get your response to it. Mm. This is CNN uh, over the weekend saying that Donald Trump has killed more people than Hitler, Stalin, and other dictators combined. Here it is. Well, I think that medicalizing politics has three very dire consequences. Hmm. The, the first is that it stigmatizes the mentally ill. I've known thousands of patients, almost all of them, have been well-behaved, well-mannered, good people. Trump is none of these. Lumping the mentally ill with Trump is a terrible insult to the mentally ill, and they have enough problems and stigma as it is. The second issue is that calling Trump crazy hides the fact that we're crazy for having elected him, and even crazier for allowing his crazy policies to persist. Trump is as destructive a person in this century as Hitler, Stalin, and Mao were in the last century. He may be responsible for many more million deaths than they were. He needs to be contained, but he needs to be contained by attacking his policies, not his person. Now, the full clip's five minutes long. It's up on Infowars.com if you'd like to go watch it. They didn't challenge him. They let him continue to go on with a statement that is, talk about insane, it is the biggest lie yet I've seen from mainstream media. And now it's obviously only going to be a new milestone on the frontier, a new record uh, to be broken, obviously. Uh, Hitler killed more than 20 million people. Stalin, uh, tens of millions. Lenin, tens of millions. The Chinese government itself says over 100 million people died during the last 70 years of what they've been doing in their experiment. H how do you respond to a statement like that? And, and where do you think that means we're going? It's idiotic. It's really idiotic. Um, Do Donald Trump doesn't have an agenda to kill millions of people. Uh, I don't think he's going to do it accidentally. And I find it very interesting how he begins with, oh, we, we shouldn't, uh, what was it, medicalize or something like that, our politics or our news, and then goes on to do exactly that, it bring Donald Trump's mental health into question, which seems really irresponsible to me because I'm sure that psychologists say that you've got to have a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, at least some sort of one-on-one -on -one time with the person. It's called the Goldwater Rule. Is that, that, that right? There we go. And so for him to then... That you lose your license for it. Really? I didn't know that. Um, but And so for him to then and go and do it so in such a blasé fashion, it's actually quite incredible. It's like, doesn't he realize that that's what he's doing? Doesn't he realize that there are going to be millions of people watching that thinking, well, you just did it. Oh, that's it. Because if you, like you said, study basic psychology, they're saying that we're Nazis and that we're invoking war and civil war and death, but they're saying that we are that and weak-minded people are going to then respond as if they're fighting Hitler and it's going to bring the very thing they say they're fighting. They know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, it's a deliberate um, a deliberate kind of radicalization. Although I, I, do quite, like, I don't know how much they know, how much they're self-aware about this, but the, the leftists are radicalizing and they are consciously aware that they're doing it, I think. I think that they have come to the point where they've de delegitimized right-wing morality and w the, the right-wing worldview to the point where they just see nothing legitimate in it and all good is with them and all bad is with you. Well, that was my next question, but I interrupted it with another. The radicalization, you read the WikiLeaks from Hillary, they said we've got to have more culture war, that's the answer. Clearly all the race baiting and all the sexist... Uh, demonization and, and, and all of this culture war, divide and conquer, hasn't worked, so they're going to keep upping it. But, I mean, at, at, at what point do they have to stop? Because at a certain point, they're going to foment so much violence. At a certain point, it's going to get out of hand, and, and clearly that's where they're pushing, but it hasn't worked so far. So, so where do you think it's going? I don't really want to speculate for fear of pushing the cart further down the tracks. Um it's not good. It's not good to declare half of the population to be the enemy, to declare them to be racists, to declare them to be white supremacists. It's, it's, there should be some compassion for your fellow countrymen. I mean, if you don't agree on at least something about your nation, then how can you continue to be a nation? This is the real problem. Like, for example, I mean, the, the open border stuff, I find most pernicious. Because if you go back to, like, the 90s, listen to Bill Clinton building a wall and deporting, and Obama deporting immigrants, that illegal immigrants. That's normal. That's and let's be clear, we've got Obama just four years ago saying. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's not even long. We got know? Nancy Pelosi five years ago. Yeah, it's it, this. The radicalization of the left has happened really, really quickly because the resistance to the arguments uh, that they were making has just collapsed in left wing politics, and so they're just shooting as far left as they can now. Uh, the Republicans are staying fairly uh, moderate because what the, the 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 Democrats have never excised the radical leftists from their own party. This thing, the Republicans do not let the Nazis in. They do not let the Richard Spencers in. You know, they, they actually reject it actively. Whereas the leftists at this point are just embracing the communists and embracing the socialists. And they've even embraced MS-13 like um, earlier this year. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is saying, oh no, they're all God's children. Did she? Oh yeah, she would not condemn MS-13. <laughs> she wouldn't condemn MS-13. She actually said we're all God's children. Well, I mean, I suppose that's true. I suppose, in a way, even MS-13 are God's children. But, 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 but it, what I'm saying is it yeah, proves your point yeah. that it's just a coalition of lawless crazies. I mean, look at Antifa. It is wild, yeah. And Antifa get an amazing amount of coverage and defense from the media as well. Um, and the argument is always, well, Antifa haven't killed anyone. Well, honestly, I think that's generally because the, the leftists are, are, le are just less proficient. I think that when they're hitting people and, you know, attacking them, trying to blow up ICE facilities and things like that, I don't think it's a lack of intent that's the problem. I think it's a lack of proficiency. That, well, you just answered my next question. Why do you think the left all over the world, not just here, is is following the same playbook of lying and and violence and stirring people up and bullying? And, and A, why are they doing it? I think you just answered it. They're desperate. But B, don't they know historically that that will actually harden people against them? Um, they think that the end justifies the means. And they think that the people who failed before them were just doing it wrong and that they'll do it better. Uh, Jordan Peterson actually uh, really nails it. This, you know, you are not competent enough to enact a system that is as all controlling as it needs to be to achieve your dream because they they do have a utopian goal in mind and it's i mean centralizing an entire country an entire economy the entire civilization is it's such a it's an arrogant thing to want to do you because even if you had computers that could do it the humans won't be able to program it or control it and, and then it removes us from the decision making process which will only make us more domesticated well, yeah, but even then, why should we agree with it? You know, that why should we? And it is, as you say, you are actually giving up your freedom, your liberty, by allowing that to happen. I don't agree. I think that I should be able to own property. I think that it's not the domain of someone else to take that property off of me, and I don't see why I should give that up. Donald Trump presents Real Stable Genius. Real stable genius. Today, we salute you, Mrs. Social Justice Warrior. Mrs. Social Justice Warrior. What do you do with a master's degree in gender studies? Put on a vagina hat and go fight fascism on the internet. Step aside. As soon as you wake up each day, the outrage begins. What the f did you just say? Your privilege is showing. And. <laughs> Armed with only a keyboard, you tirelessly protect America from fake racism and fake sexism and fake some other word we've never even heard of, ism. I need a trigger warning, please. So crack open a nice soy latte, Miss Purple Haired Vagina Costume Wearer. You live by life's two greatest rules, punch Nazis and everyone I don't like is a Nazi. This is social justice warrior. Donald Trump, President Forever, Washington, D.C. What is your view of the whole situation happening right now in Hong Kong? Uh, I'm very worried about what's going to happen in Hong Kong. I'm sure that um, I'm sure the protesters that there has been a occasion where the protesters have done something that's maybe on the wrong side of the law, like cutting down. Um, uh, the the monitoring uh, the the facial recognition cameras and things like this you could argue that this is illegal well i suppose technically it is but the the consequences from the chinese government are going to be a lot worse than anything the protesters have done or will have been uh, will have been able to justify from what the protesters have done uh, frankly i wouldn't trust the chinese government at all well i agree with that statement 100 percent, and i want to just clarify for viewers because i've made a, a, a study of history because it's so interesting not so i can sit around and show off you know having a general understanding of a wide range of things uh, hong kong taiwan uh the, the you know going back to world war ii and the british were there before uh, and china had all been divided and then the japanese invaded and killed 
probably 10 million they estimate Chinese and then Mao Zedong the communist rises and the left double crosses the right wing here in the U.S. it actually funds him and then uh, all the entrepreneur Chinese with Chiang Kai-shek run to Taiwan run to Hong Kong so 70 years later this year is when Mao took over China uh, the people that didn't want to be under it fled down to Hong Kong and down to Taiwan now the Chinese just finished the biggest bridge in the world a year ago they're already planning to use it uh, as an invasion force, and they're saying we're going to secretly arrest you, take you away, get rid of your representative democracy. And so the people are there flying American flags, saying, hey, we know you got uh, independence from the British. We want independence as well. And I see it as very legitimate because they never voted to be part of communist China. It's a dictatorship. And so I don't want to stir them up. I know that certain elements, even Hillary said, okay, we're with the democracy people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, Hillary's, you know, sees something to cut away from China now because she knows that's U.S. policy. But, so I'm not for regime change, but this isn't regime change. This is an autonomous, free group of people who ran for their lives, their parents, their grandparents 70 years ago. So I can only support what they're doing and, 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 the, and their courage and the incredible footage that Paul Watson for InfoWars and the rest of our crew has gotten there has just been uh, just incredible. I know I'm ranting, but. Oh, no, I, I mean, no one voted to be part of communist China. That's the problem with it, isn't it? So, I mean. It, there's not. I don't think there's anything good that's going to come of being given to China. No one wants to be ruled by China. No one wants to be part of that system. It's. It genuinely is Orwell's nightmare sprung to life. And now the people of Hong Kong, who have, like you say, for the last 50 or so years, have had liberty in their country, are about to lose that because of a treaty that was like, wasn't it like 99-year lease or something like that? Yes. That, that's right. So, yeah. So after and by the way, we're getting old. 1949 yeah. to, 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 to 2019? That that's that's a long time. Yeah, absolutely, and and so they're about to lose that. Seventy because, years. Yeah, they're about to lose that because of a treaty that was made before they were even born, and through no fault of their own, and they don't appear to have any democratic means of resisting it. It's really terrible, actually. Well, like you said, if, you, if people think Tiananmen Square, uh, Tiananmen Square was bad, this is going to be explosive. And like you said, yeah. they're massing hundreds of thousands of troops thousands of armored vehicles and, and showing drills on TV saying they could invade in, in, in the next few weeks. Uh, yeah, I, I would, I'm honestly really worried about what's going to happen. I've been asking a lot of questions here, but the 20 minutes or so we have left, uh, let's get into an issue that obviously affects everybody watching and listening to this, and that's censorship. But I don't even call this censorship. The documents we've gotten from Google and Facebook and others is it's total information management of what everybody can see. And Eric Schmidt, the former head of Google, said our future goal, he said this in 2013, 2014, is that you'll only get one search when you search something, the correct search that we decide you're supposed to get. He said that on Charlie Rose. Very uh, Really? Yes, yeah, very chilling. And that's what horrifies me is people think, oh, it's just Alex Jones. Because I know I wasn't that important. They chose me because they could demonize me, build a straw man. Then when I got taken off the air, People would say, oh, that's just him. And then the precedent would be set and, and the whole thing could collapse. And now the dominoes are all going down. Well, that's the reason I'm here. I mean, it was obviously unjust when you got tanked from absolutely every single platform in a matter of days. And this this was, it was obviously a coordinated a, a attack on your liberty, an attack on your free speech. There's no question of it. And it could, if it can happen to you, it can happen to anyone. You were the canary in the coal mine. And then we're seeing it further and further. I mean, like, Paul Joseph Watson got pulled off of Facebook and Instagram for an, an, interview, an interview with Tommy Robinson from, like, three years ago or something like this. And then you get um, Stephen Crowder gets demonetized, his entire channel demonetized, just because um, some guy at Vox.com didn't like him. And it's like, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. YouTube even said that Crowder had done nothing wrong, but the Twitter mob put pressure on YouTube and YouTube caved and said, well, we'll demonetize him. And even then, that wasn't good enough. Even then, they were still agitating to get his entire channel, his livelihood taken away. And that's the future that we're looking at, where YouTube caves to angry Twitter mobs. That has to stop. And, and expand on that, Facebook a few months ago, where they added myself and Paul and a few others to that list, they said they are the most banned and you can only say their name or website if it's in a negative way to, to repudiate them. And so they said, you can't even say their name or their website unless you're attacking them. So that's social engineering people to attack us. Yeah, I'm probably going to get banned from Facebook for being on this. Um, so, so why I'm, did you do I'm, it? Because I think it was the right thing to do. I, I think it's wrong that you get 
um, it appears to have been some kind of Silicon Valley collusion. And we know that this goes on because Jack Conte blabbed in his interview with Dave Rubin that they do this. And so you can essentially say, well, there is a, a, a cabal of people who are like acting like a moral mafia who think that they get to be the ones who gatekeep who gets to speak and who doesn't. And I don't think that's acceptable. I think that has to change. I mean, I, I am actually on a Facebook uh, watch list as well because and one of the one of the things, and this was again just wonderful. I had given a neutral representation of one of the Proud Boys, and that was considered to be favourable to the Proud Boys. And I was like, well, your your very definition was I gave them a neutral hearing, and you're calling that favourable coverage. Then we can't even carry on, can we? It's because they want to demonise a group, straw man them, and they don't want the real thing to be heard. Well. I think it's more about partisan politics. I think it's because uh, we generally oppose the sort of radical left progressive consensus and they know it. And they know that we've got a way of essentially undermining them by just speaking. And if they can't win by speaking, they're going to have to win by force because to them, the ends justify the means. You can hear this from like Tim Cook of Apple speaking, how they've got an almost evangelical ethical agenda from the radical left. And they're going to pursue it because they, are, they have the power and they have what they consider to be the moral justification. And if we oppose them, if we have a different moral framework, then we have to go. And you're so right. Make no mistake that this is, this is force. This is violence. As Mao said, political power grows out of the barrel of the gun. Well, mm -hmm. it's very violent to shut people out of the communication system. It, it, it's very violent to do it in a concerted effort with a global social credit score where even the Chinese admit it's meant to starve you to death and, and make it where you can't walk two feet outside your door. Those are quotes from the government if you don't submit to the behavior we want. Well, even once you submit to that, now they can tighten the noose and make you submit to more and more and more. So you have a lot of courage coming on the broadcast. And I think it's fair to say, because I asked you this when I met you, I said, I'm a fan of yours. I've asked you on for years. You wouldn't come on. Why is that? And you explained it, but then you said, but things have gotten so dark. I've now got to do the right thing, basically as a man, and stand up and say it's wrong uh, because that's the moral uh, thing to do. So, so, so yeah, why don't you elaborate right. on what you said before we came on air? No, no, that's exactly it. I think that um, we, we, can't, we can't play favorites now. We can't, um, we can't you know, um, turn up our noses just because we might not like a person or what they say or the things they stand for. I mean, this, this is the thing with the, the alt-right, the actual sort of far-right Nazi types. Like, I've, I've debated against all of them, and I don't think any of them should be deplatformed. It's better to have them in the daylight where we can see them and what they're saying and what they're doing so we can actually try and draw people away from their movement because if they're actually off somewhere else and we, can't even, we don't even know where they are, we don't know what they're saying, we don't know who they're talking to, we don't know how they're organising... How do, it 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 shouldn't be too much of a surprise when terrible things happen. We have we've you know we should. It would be sensible for us to have these things in the light, so we can say, look, this is how ridiculous they are, and they can become fools. And this actually happened in the UK as well. So um, there was a a, a, a very very uh, far right party called the British National Party. They were given a platform in 2011 on a question on Question Time. It's a big TV program in the UK. And uh, Nick Griffin was the leader of it. Until then, he was kind of a shadowy figure, a dark name. Nobody really knew, you know, but there was a kind of, ooh, an, an allure. And then he went on Question Time and just got revealed to be the, the massive bigot that he was. And it destroyed his party. It destroyed them. And that's what we need to do with essentially anything. The, the best disinfectant really is sunlight. There's a huge awakening happening. There's a giant explosive time here, but at the same time, they're also now going to pure lies, pure demonization, saying we run demonstrations we have nothing to do with, saying we terrorized Austin, had, you know, scare, gun scares going, zero involvement, uh, saying I hate black people, uh, saying uh, I'm a drug dealer, uh, saying I'm a, just you name it, in mainstream news, in concerted efforts, hundreds of articles per day, per day. Maddow was in over 300 on Monday. Chicago Tribune, uh, Washington Post, I mean, Miami Herald, I mean, Austin American States when I got calls about it. People going, you didn't, you think we had a moon landing. You, you, you know, you don't, uh, you're not involved in the Boston bombing. I mean, folks, you're talking hardcore. So in the past, they would just kill me. But because of the info war, that would make me a martyr. <laughs> Plus, like shark teeth, I've got rows of people ready to replace me, okay? And so... Instead, they are murdering who I am right now. They are killing 
who Alex Jones is. And look, Jesse Ventura has his problems politically. I don't agree with him on quite a bit of things, but he he did get politically assassinated. You know, with the whole Chris Kyle thing. Uh, they could pull similar things on me. <clears throat> this is all a sign we're having a huge effect. They wouldn't be doing all of this if we weren't hitting the zeitgeist. And, and InfoWars is growing exponentially right now. So I want to give you kind of the state of the InfoWars union here on the success we're having and realize when you tell friends and family to tune in, when you direct them to InfoWars.com forward slash show, where they can download the podcast, watch the live feeds, you know, uh, whatever. If you're listening on AM and FM stations, Tell your friends and family to tune into that. Uh, you are the info warriors. Now, they're going to strike back a bunch of ways. I'm going to be doing some special reports that go through how they're doing this. But the model, because it's total totalitarianism in China, they admit this in Australia, the U.S., you name it, the model for Internet censorship is going to be phased in Chinese-style net censorship. Net IDs, net taxes, three strikes and you're out net rules. But before they get to that, they're going to phase in. It started... Starts this next year, just you know, 10 days or so, or less, I guess nine days, in China. And they're already lining up with Facebook, Google, uh, uh, all of them agreeing with China, uh, Microsoft, to implement these systems where China already does it, and then they beta test there and then bring it here. And our stories on DrudgeReport.com, we do a document cam uh, over here. And, of course, Drudge gets how incredibly important this is. We've been mentioning this for the last few months, but now it's hit critical mass because the Chinese have released the full details. Everything you do, everything you do in China, from your credit score to what you buy to discount cards to your Internet records uh, to what you say on social networks, is integrated into an algorithm. And if you criticize the government basically once... You can't even buy or sell. You can't go to a hotel. You can't travel. Now, notice all this is being phased in here with the IRS saying, if we start auditing you or don't even start an investigation, you can't fly. Internal checkpoints. I mean, it's on, folks. So Europe's doing the same thing. This is all being brought in. It's being implemented. I mean, this is classical tyranny. It's here. And again, the Supreme Court justice told Drudge, next year, they're coming for you. And then they have the head of the, you know, the heads of the FCC and yeah, we're coming for your free speech, talk radio, internet, you name it. I mean, because they can't beat us, folks. They're flaming tyrants. They're flaming uh, crooks, annihilating our country, spying on us illegally, opening our borders, having the Border Patrol complete the smuggling process. I mean, this is the globalist offensive. This is the war against America. And globally, there's a world awakening. So they know in algorithms, and they admit this, that revolutions are coming. Just because food prices in the third world have gone up past 50%, they know at that point riots start. They already have their operators ready to steer the revolutions into radical al-Qaeda, radical ISIS, radical al-Nusra, Saudi Arabian driven. Same thing here. They're going to have a big communist kill the cops, shoot the cops, burn the cities. They're going to let them do it, order the cops to stand down, and then say, cops, it's your fault, capitulate, go under UN control. I mean, it's on, folks. You are witnessing a real coup. 100% what I'm telling you is happening. Now, I knew this was coming, but to see it actually happen is so bold, is so over the top, that I get why people just can't believe it. And again, Sargon, I don't mind people criticizing me. That's why I wanted to say that on air. But I don't want to split hairs, but the media will spin this. To be clear, I really like what you say and do, and I understand that they can edit what I've said out of context. If you do, you know, 30 hours of stuff a week, you're going to say some things, even when you're joking, that come off like a train wreck. And certainly some of the things I've said are wrong or, or you know, came out wrong with the years. Mm. But I think what you were saying, honestly, was the caricature they created of you was so clownish, the straw man, that if I got involved with you, that would taint me really trying to reach out to the intellectual class and successfully get them to come back to classical liberalism. Uh, but now things have gotten so dark that it's time to throw my lot even in with uh, the heretic uh, because we're all the heretics now. Yeah, there's there's no distinction being drawn. I mean, this has been something that's been warned about for quite some time, but that's absolutely correct. There is no distinction being drawn anymore. You say that um, you know people can take you out of context and things like this. Well, recently there was a, a website put up that was a deep fake algorithm about Jordan Peterson that could very convincingly get him to apparently say whatever you wanted him to say. And apparently it's a program because they've been yeah. putting my words in his mouth and I saw this, yeah. and it, it was it was frightening. The audio was him. But, I mean, pe people were quite annoyed that Jordan Peterson was thinking about taking legal action. But, I mean, in his position, I can see why he would be 
really upset by this and wants to do something. Megyn I mean, Kelly did that to me, but she took a real interview about her funding Al Qaeda and, and uh, ISIS in the Middle East. And I said, she, uh, I said, I don't know if she's really killing kids in basements, like they say, but I know that she's funded the groups that have gone in and killed hundreds of thousands of people, tens of thousands of yeah. children, many of them raped to death, a little girl raped to death by 100 men. So I said, Hillary Clinton is killing children. She played that when she was still at Fox with the guy from the pizza place yep. and said to him, what do you think of what he just said about you? And of course the guy didn't know, yeah. but it was edited audio. We had the video, we put the raw video up and then showed how they'd edited it. People flipped out, it got like 5 million views. Here's the problem, I'm off YouTube now. Mm -hmm. So that's gone. So now they're saying it again. Think of the magnitude of that. Yeah, there's it, control of information is a very important thing, and you should be able to control the information that you put out. So Megyn and Kelly did a deep fake on me. Well, no, you can't. It wasn't done with a computer. Yeah, it was done by editing. The, the term deep fake specifically means computer-generated yes, algorithm. So we can't say that. It, for, for that, it was just false editing. It's just taking you out of context. But isn't that an organic form of deep, deep fake? Well, yeah, it's the same principle. It's still a lie by omission. Saying Trump said all Mexicans are criminals, he never yeah, said that. He didn't say that. No, it's 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 still a lie. It's still fake news. I mean, you know, just no. You're technically right. It's not a deep fake. There, I, there I was are lots always of different yeah. methods of creating fake news, and they're all pernicious. Well, getting back to like say the Nazis, hmm. it's come out in court that that most of these Nazi groups, going back to Elohim City in the mid '90s in Oklahoma. They're actually run by the Southern Poverty Law Center. They're actually run by foundations. Oh, uh, all the guys, all the, you know, uh, uh, of the 10 leaders, five of them at Charlottesville work for Obama or Hillary the year before, and then suddenly they become Nazi leaders. I mean, come on. Um, I, I'm not gonna, I don't know anything about that, but it is possible that they changed opinions and changed sides. So I'm not gonna rule it out, but I don't know anything about that. Well, where's an example? London Guardian reports that most of the Nazi attacks going on in the 90s and stuff, back when the Guardian was still real, were actually German secret police. Really? But, but, but they were staging false flags themselves. Right, because you, you do get people like, um, there's a chap called um, Baked Alaska who worked for BuzzFeed and was a leftist and then joined the alt-right. So, um, but the thing is, this harks back to a lot, a lot of what a lot of intellectuals were saying around the 1930s is that there's not very much difference between a communist and a Nazi. It's actually not a dramatic shift in ideology. Well, you're right. Whenever I see, who, who's the guy that, that's the leader and they said it's okay to punch a Nazi and I don't agree with that, but what's his name? I always forget his name. Uh, which one? Richard Spencer. Yeah, yeah Richard Spencer. He's right? basically a progressive, yeah. I've seen interviews with him and he's like, I want national socialism. I, I, America sucks. And he just sounds like a leftist. Well, yeah, he wants, you know, health, um, universal health care. And, a, you know, he doesn't want open borders. So I suppose that's, that's one thing. But, yeah, he, in many ways, he is very, very similar to a leftist. I think he has actually called himself a progressive before. So no, in, in the interview I saw, but he saw he's, he's wearing like a 1930s outfit. Yes, he's very dapper, <laughs> very posh, very soft. Well, you know, you're here in the United States. We've been flattered to have you in studio. And we've got about 10 minutes left. I want to get as much out of you as I can because you're a fascinating guy. Thank you. Um, I don't see how they were able to take you off some platforms already. Because when I watch your your shows, I mean, you're, you're well-spoken, very friendly guy. Like you said, you sound like a liberal professor 30 years ago. So the fact that they want you off the air just shows how insane the left has become. I think really it's down to efficacy. I think if I had a pla I think if I had a platform of like five viewers or something, they wouldn't care. Um, I think it's the fact that I've I had a large or I have a large audience, and I'm. But most importantly, I'm directly opposing progressivism as an ideology. Because that I think that is the root of the the problems here, and it, like the radical leftism that is slipped in under the guise of progressivism, I'm I think I'm quite uh, I'm quite effective at challenging this, and I think that's the problem. So obviously this is your day job now, but oh, yeah. per, but but personally, when you started out and didn't know you'd get you know fifty million viewers a month or whatever, what were you doing then? What made you get engaged? What were you thinking this YouTube channel would do? Honestly, I didn't have any plan for it whatsoever, which is why I ended up with the name Sarkin of a Cad. I, I was just, I, I was, I'd, I'd been working for um, the government uh, research councils in Britain, and I, I, I lost that job for for whatever reason, and I was unemployed and looking for other jobs, and I was just annoyed at the things that I was seeing in the news, and I thought, well, you know, I'd, I'd registered a YouTube account like three years prior just so I could follow some videos that I was interested in, and so I just thought, oh, I'll up upload one and talk about the things I'm concerned about talking about, and here we are. That was that funny one you did about the humble 
humble uh, water filter merchant. <laughs> You're that funny. Wasn't, that wasn't my meme. I stole that. But uh, man, when 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 you did the gay frogs thing, I, I was I read through it and I was like, well, that's true. <laughs> That's actually a true thing. The, the question wasn't whether it was turning the frogs gay, it's who was doing it and why. And it was really corporate laziness, not like a government conspiracy. But, uh, but they're directly pushing to do this to young boys for depopulation. Well, the, the radical left certainly are. I don't know whether it's for depopulation, that's the thing. But, I mean, they're probably... Well, they're running around trying to chop young boys' balls off like, yeah. you know, the old-fashioned <laughs> Native Americans wanted to have scalps. Yes, yes. The, the, the radical left actually do hate masculinity. And they Let's talk about that some, because yeah. this war on masculinity, yes, and it's not empowering women. What's behind it? Where's it going? Um, it's because the radical left has been is is it's a it's a feminist movement, and they're very they they'll all call themselves feminists. They're very open about it. Though they think that masculinity is toxic, they think it's the cause of the suffering that women have to endure, and therefore the solution is to feminize men. And that's actually not healthy for men. It turns them. It turns them weird. It it makes them unhappy. It well, and also statistically, happy. women really don't like that. So all no. these women that have the no, liberal beta cuck husband, <laughs> she's out having sex all day with the alpha males, and, and then and and then meanwhile he now they even wear shirts that say I'm a cuck. Yes, so they now do. they. <laughs> That was at the recent Antifa protest in uh, Portland. He had a shirt that said Beta Cuck for Life. That's unironically true. There's actually clothing lines. People thought it was a joke. Yep. Um, yeah, but but that is true. That That is absolutely true. I mean, only 8% of um, America and about roughly 9% of uh, Britain are radical left-wing activists. Uh, in, in my country, about 35% of people are actively opposed to feminism rather than just like, then just then it's not that they're not feminists, it's they oppose feminism. Like there is a much broader section of the population that is opposed to this. And, and, and part of it is, as you say, women are attracted to masculinity. They do like masculine men. They don't tend to go for feminine men. For, I don't know why I have to say that. It seems obvious, doesn't it? But that's the reality of it and you can see by the polling and yet the feminists are not happy about this but the, the whole the whole drive behind all of it is down to equality they think that masculinity is a they, they know that it's a it's a it's an upward force it, it it's creative it's exploratory it's aggressive it it's not going to end up with equality but it is going to end up with things like success and excitement and things like this but that's not equality you know and so they have to drag that down to make the men the same as the women but that drags everybody down yes it does i mean again men can't have babies but there's this mental illness where they go oh look this man's having a baby but it's a woman that transitioned said she was a man still had a uterus and then has a baby and we're all supposed to just go along with the mental illness yeah, and they've actually declassified transgenderism as a mental illness now. Uh, it used to be that gender dysphoria was a mental illness, but they decided, well, if we recategorize it out of the category of mental illness, then it's not a mental illness. Well, here's an example. If I get depressed, which I'm not going to do hypothetically, you start ch cutting my fingers off with a hatchet, they're going to put me in a mental institution. <laughs> yes, they would, yeah. But if I wanted to go and have my balls chopped off, that would be and, very and, progressive, and, and and you know have my uh, my junk sliced up. Yep, it, that would be oh beautiful. This is or or the transabled people that want bleach poured in their eyes to be blind yep. and then we've got to pay for them yep it's it's very progressive it's 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 all about breaking down barriers because all of these all of these barriers are a form of oppression you see because if you can't become a woman but you want to become a woman then you're being oppressed nature is oppressing you and if we can do something about that we can philosophically change it so trans women are women we can physically change your body using all v surgeries that are not even uh like surgeries that are not they're experimental and drugs that have not yet been tested. The channel, I think it was Channel 4 or BBC, they, they put out a documentary about tra transgenderism in the UK. And in the documentary, they just openly admitted that, yeah, these drugs have not been tested, but they just switched to a, the 16-year-old child who was taking the drugs, and they were like, yeah, I'm happy to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. It's like, are we really allowing the government to get... Well, let's expand on that. Just six, seven years ago, everybody laughed at South Park where, you know, the guy wants to be a dolphin, but he's not really a dolphin. Now... It's LGBTP <laughs> everywhere. They're saying, no, sex with children is normal. 
and the news is pushing well, hang on, it. Hang on. So uh, not 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 all of them are saying that. Some of them are saying that. But you well, are, I see it all over the place. Yeah, yeah, no, you are right. So Salon.com published, I think it was two or three articles from someone called a virtuous pedophile who is advocating that this was actually a sexual identity. And there have been lots of uh, academics who have said this is actually a, a natural sexual identity and not some kind of mental disease. Uh, so there is a push towards normalization in that regard. And if you look at pride parades now, they seem to be turning into fetish parades. I mean, I'm also, and they say, oh, little kids can handle it. And then they have books from Australia yeah. to the U.S. in the library that teach six-year-olds how great oral sex is. That's a pedophilic book. Yeah, that is. And that's actually something that happened, people. Um, and yeah, the slippery slope seems to be greased up and really, really, really long. <laughs> so, so, so in closing here, <laughs> fascinating to have you on. Yeah, and, you. and looking at all this, if you go back to the Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot, or you go back to other fascist and communist movements, they would just go in when, when Lenin took over. He'd go into the small towns and medium-sized cities and kill the doctors, kill the intellectuals, because even if they said, yeah, we support you, they still didn't trust them because they could be leaders. And they also killed off most of the Russian military leadership because they were threatened by him, which also crippled Russia for a long time and allowed Hitler to a certain extent to get as far as he got uh, later, decades later, and so you see them killing the, the killing fields, killing anybody that had glasses on. The fact that you could afford glasses meant they were going to kill you, and they killed up to yeah. a third of the population. And so that's what I see this censorship as. Anybody intellectual that's really changing minds, anybody that's really having an effect, whether they be conservative, Christian, liberal, whatever, if they're outside the main corporate system, they're going to be silenced and even WhatsApp. And all these text messaging things. Just three months ago, when we got banned, you know, using my name on Facebook and Paul, they said, CNN went, we want to see if he's on WhatsApp. We're looking at the accounts. So they're inside the stuff. So we can stop Jones from sending private messages. So they want to go down to the level, like we would always say, what's next? AT&T listens to what I'm saying with, with AI and, and says I can't say it. Facebook and all of them are already doing it and admitting that, so they're not just listening to you with the assistant inside your house. They are now listening to the messages you send. They are now reading what you say and not letting you do it in real time and, quote, having real humans flag it and watch it in real time in your phone. So, so see, they're just light yearing out, trying to go so far with the Overton window that no matter how hard we battle back, they've so fundamentally overturned reality and civilization that we're down a rat hole. What I find really amazing about it is how transparent the political agenda is because You'll, you'll see um, people like Susan Wojcicki uh, going on certain YouTube channels to be interviewed by them, and not others, obviously. Um, and then you'll see people like yourself, and it's always, always of a particular bent. You know, Gavin McInnes, you know, myself. It's, it's always people in a certain particular sphere who get deplatformed. And then if you just think about it, murderers have Facebook accounts. They don't get deplatformed for being murderers. They still have their Facebook accounts. Pedophiles have Facebook accounts. Like terrorists. Have ISIS. Facebook. Yeah, ISIS have Facebook accounts. It's it, like actual people who have done really terrible things actually have Facebook but accounts. But they're not thought criminals. But they're not thought criminals. So let me ask you this question. What do you think government should do? Because I don't believe in government involvement things. I'm a libertarian. Except, yep. except when you have co corporations working in tandem as combines... Uh, like tech, bigger than most countries individually together, more powerful than probably even the oh, U.S. Yes. And they are censoring people. They are manipulating the general info that the public can get, and they're abusing that power, and they have a monopoly uh, you know, s uh, section in law here, Section 230, where they are seen as a utility so they don't have liability. What I want is a First Amendment that doesn't take rights but enshrines them and guards them and is a prohibition on the exact gang mentality control that we now see unfolding. They... There is a very strong libertarian argument to not have the government be involved because the you know the the argument goes something like well ten years ago Google was nothing so you know and then you know where where's MySpace where are the these other platforms now but um, I think that the as you say the Section two eighty has been manipulated uh, not manipulated the, taken advantage of for a political agenda and the the scope of these companies has become so big. And they have been masquerading as platforms when really they are publishers that 
it is kind of irresponsible for us to not do something because we are seeing the actual political disintegration of Western countries. And it probably is because of social media. I mean, Jack Dorsey looks like he's a monk. He looks like he spends his time in the desert meditating on how he has screwed the West because of Twitter. He look, I mean, and Twitter is ruining the political class. Like the Daily Beast, um, one of these journalistic outlets, they actually, internal documents were leaked where the, the, the CEOs of it were recommending that they stop using Twitter. Just stop using Twitter because it's doing damage to the mental health of the people on it. It puts them in this war mode where they're constantly fighting the enemy. You know, you're the, you know, the right wingers are the enemy. We're the good guys. So we're just in this constant war footing. And it, it really is driving a wedge and people get radicalized on social media. They know it. And it's one of those things where if, if you're taking the opposition off, then you're going to get all one side. And so you can't... And it's going to radicalize faster. You can't help it. And, and so I don't like to have to say, well, some, the government is going to have to do something. But I think that revoking the Section 280 protections and making them publishers rather than platforms is probably the easiest, simplest, and least intrusive thing to do. Absolutely. And remember, two years ago, Jack Dorsey was quoted in a newspaper interview. And he said, yeah, I said that, saying... I'm not one side. I mean, I'm not two sided. I'm not fair. We need to have war. We need to crush these people. You can pull up the actual quote, but it was very similar to that. And there's a couple of Matt Taibbi uh, articles about myself and the censorship a year ago where he actually got it right. Uh, censorship is not in well was one. Uh, beware of the slippery slope of Facebook censorship was the other. Mm -hmm. and, and he exposes, and I'll say it again a year after we did here, because we're the conspiracy theorists, that the Atlantic Council w w was already there. But it was a group of CIA and NSA high-level, you know, former directors and others. When Obama left, he funded billions of dollars uh, into a quote group to fight the Russians. But then they just took that money and purposed it to go after myself and others to set the precedent. And so Trump has a stay-behind network group, and it's all in here. The Atlantic Council with people still in government and out of government that are operating mutinously against Trump. And so he even gets the quotes together that we've played here on air mm. of the senators and congressmen saying, I want all right-wingers off. Banning Alex Jones isn't enough. There's thousands of sites that are just as bad. Uh, Senator Blumenthal, Wyden, uh, Murphy, they've said getting rid of Jones is key to saving America. Uh, these are quotes. And so these Matt Taibbi articles aren't Alex Jones. Okay, I, I told you this before. They are, Taibbi explaining, this is already the government, but a faction of the government is giving clearance, they believe, to big tech and giving them orders. So this group was already giving them orders, okay? Well, it, it, we don't even need to go to the government either. The worst thing is, this can happen without government intervention, as we saw with Stephen Crowder and Carlos Maza of Vox, who's now left Vox. But it was Carlos's insistence that... He, was, he didn't like Stephen Crowder making jokes about him, calling him a lispy queer. Um, and Even though that guy calls himself a queer. He does, yes. He's, he, he does. Um, but, but Stephen Crowder was mocking him, and he, Carlos Maza didn't like that, and so he complained on Twitter to YouTube, and YouTube said, well, he hasn't actually broken the terms of service, and the Twitter mob got louder and angrier, and so they, they demonetized his entire platform. Millions of subscribers. He must have been, you know, he's got an entire team behind it. That's what supports his entire business model, and they were like, no, we're going to de demonetize and it. And that business model had been investing in Twitter and making it its hub for years, yeah, yeah. and so it's a form of robbery that Twitter said, oh, you're not breaking the rules for all these years, and then when a Twitter mob, a bunch of you know people with torches and pitchforks, yeah. when they come, you lose it all. And that's another great example. The New York Times it, leaked. It's 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 worse than that. It's like now Crowder has to work for free. Now he has to. He, he can't stop doing his job, and so now he has to work for free. He doesn't have another platform to go to, and it's all on the say of one of his political enemies. It's not that he broke the rules. He didn't, and it was. Just and that's only phase one. Ex well, because yeah. next me, they'll just destroy him completely unless his listeners support him and create their own base. But let me bring this well, up. That, since that you was the request, actually, that he was completely deplatformed. But sorry, go on. No, you're right. Yeah. And we'll close with this and let you finish. Yeah. Remember two weeks ago, the New York Times leaked uh, in information. It came out that the head of the New York Times was telling people, hey, Twitter, you can't do what they say anymore. <sighs> you know, there was a headline saying Trump says America must come together and he condemned uh, white supremacism after the tragedy in El Paso. Mm -hmm. And Twitter got mad about that, attacked the New York Times. They got scared, pulled the headline down, and began apologizing. And he said, listen, we changed the headline within an hour 
You shouldn't give these mobs the power. I agree it made him look too good. We won't do that anymore. We're going to shift from Russia to race, but be slicker about it and stop giving the outraged mobs all the power because they're making you sound wild. This is a 74-page you know, transcript, or 74-minute, excuse me, but it's a long transcript, and I read the whole damn thing. And he's trying to read between the lines so it's not obvious, but a few times he comes right out and says it. Just calling him a Nazi isn't working. We need to subtly destroy him with the race thing, but stop letting Twitter radicalize you to the point of where you sound like an idiot. And, and it's so telling just what you said about Twitter and this hysteria, which then produces the four horsemen, which are super unpopular and are destroying the Democratic Party. They can't help themselves, so it's a black <laughs> hole of hysteria. That's true. I like the, I like calling the squad the four horsemen. That's a, the four horsewomen, I suppose. That's really good. But no, you, you're absolutely right. That was exactly it. The, the New York Times headline was... Uh, it was Trump uh, versus uh, Trump. Trump uh, suggests unity against racism or something yes. like this. But the the problem with that is obviously it dichotomizes Trump against racism, and they're trying to include him in the definition of racism. He is the racist in chief, as far as they're concerned. If they dichotomize him against racism, then that makes him look good. And and but that was a, that was an accurate description of what he had done. He had said no that white supremacy, neo Nazis, this is all bad. We reject it completely. And that wasn't good enough because that completely undermines the Twitter mob's power to coerce. My oldest daughter went to a football game. She's 15 and she has a lot of friends and she's popular, but she went from one school to another and kids walked over and said, you're Alex Jones's daughter. Why does he deny the Holocaust and hate Jewish? And, and my daughter just said, you know, you're just believing fake news and walked off. But that's the level of the brainwashing. Yeah. Yeah. So. How do people find you? How do they find your work if they weren't already a listener or viewer? And have you moved to build your own website to back everything up? Because as Matt Drudge said in the studio four years ago, uh, this was all coming. He said, we've got to decentralize. Um, I am I am working on decentralizing. There, There is um, alt tech, uh, which exists now. So there are, there are platforms like BitChute, Telegram, uh, Gab.ai, uh, which are, I have a presence on all of those. And they're very easy to find me. You can just search Sargon of a Cat and I'll be the first results. Just like I used to be on Google uh, before my MEP campaign. I was the first result on Google if you typed in Sargon of a Cat. I'd, I'd usurped the position of the historical one. But now you can't actually find my YouTube channel or videos that way. You have to type in Sargon of a Cat YouTube specifically to be able to find my channel. And then when you go on YouTube, you have to actually go to my channel to find my videos. You can't actually get the videos up if you just do a search. That's right. A lot of the videos people post of yeah. me doing interviews, they're not even listed now when somebody else uh, puts them up. But think about how, again, how dangerous that is that whether it's infowars.com or breitbart.com or drudgereport.com, I used to get search stuff on Drudge on Google and I was trying to search his news feed the other day because he tweeted out some night, some very interesting stuff and I had to dig around. And so if you search Alex Jones, hmm. it's, it's, it's three pages down at the bottom, well, it used to be yeah. at the top. Oh yeah, yeah. Three pages here. till you find me. What I'm actually saying. Yeah, same here. I, they, they they manipulate their search results, and you can see this uh, anyway. You go, go to a search engine like DuckDuckGo and search in Hillary Clinton, and then just see what the the recommended uh, the the fill in and the searches, and then do the same on Google and see what comes up. You'll see the difference. It's just so amazing. And then they get before Congress and they say. We've never manipulated one search result yeah. in our history. Then all their internal documents admit they're doing it. Yeah, they, they are. Absolutely, they are. There are loads of whistleblowers. There's loads of Project Veritas videos catching them and, you know, saying they do. A year ago, Mike Cernovich was sent yeah. a, a document about me where Google hired a third-party contractor to attack my name, spam people to drive my name down. I can believe it. I can absolutely believe it. I mean, one of the things that we saw on Twitter the other day uh, after the death of Jeffrey Epstein was the, the trending hashtag Clinton body count. And lo and behold, that disappeared within a few hours and a different one replaced it, Trump body count. And if you search for it, you could find accounts where they were just spamming, a bot spamming tweets with Trump body count, Trump body count, just filling the tweet uh, the, and in a chain of tweets just to get... Don't they up. get that once people see that, they wake up... We're going to go get dinner. The crew's been here late. This has been an amazing interview, but i got to say this gut level. I think they've miscalculated. I think this is going to really absolutely uh, overturn the left. I think it's going to destroy the corporate globalism. I think there's going to be a new system that comes out of this. I think it's going to be very, very dangerous. It's going to be a very tumultuous time. Uh, but at a gut level, I think classical liberalism is going to come back in in the near future. And uh, I think it's going to be populist and nationalist that embrace it, uh, that'll end up being the new intellectual elite. And I think we're going to see a new dawn uh, and a, a new renaissance, 
I mean, I think that's the, the very possible, probable outcome if we do our jobs and keep fighting and aren't bullied. Well, let's hope so. What do you think? Um, I don't even want to think about the future. I just want to think about what's right in front of my face because, my God, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It's been, it's been a really wild few years. Well, you've got um, children. What's your gut level? Uh, I, like, I, we've just got to keep doing what we're doing. Um, we must have some effect, and we must be doing something right. Otherwise, they wouldn't pay any attention to us. So, All right. Good, good to have you here. Glad you came to the United States. And uh, let's go get something to eat. That sounds good. All right, folks. That's it for this uh, extended transmission. We taped this, but I'm going to add a lot of documents and articles and clips uh, to it, obviously, that you just saw. Uh, but uh, this guy is great, and I'm glad that uh, he came in here uh, to uh, cavort with uh, the Central Texas a command center where you find the original patient zero of modern heretics. We're very proud to be that. So thank you all for your uh, views and for all your support. Without you, we would not be here. InfoWars. Tomorrow's news today. I've known Alex for like more than 20 years. I've hung out with that guy. We've been hammered together so many times. That is the most misunderstood guy on the planet. He was right about all this Jeffrey Epstein shit. That is a f***ing fact. Alex Jones called this years ago. For years, Jones has been spreading conspiracy theories. He may be America's best known conspiracy theorist. Alex Jones. The far-right conspiracy theorist, radio host and conspiracy theorist, Alex Jones. Alex Jones supported President Trump, but also peddled and promoted sick conspiracy theories. It's really hard for me to understand how anyone can be so sick in the head. Alex Jones, my God, Mika, and just yeah. conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Alex Jones has been behind several right-wing conspiracy theories. Right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Radio host and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. The captain of America's conspiracy theory mothership. Alex Jones. Jones espouses a litany of conspiracy theories, although he thinks that term belittles his reporting. Uh, the government's poisoning the water. Absolutely. I have all these other government documents uh, where the government proposes and government think tanks propose uh, to poison the water to dumb down the population make them more easily manageable. Oh dear, the fluoride didn't work on this one. He's fighting back against my takeover. Hurry, chemtrail him immediately. I've noticed what they attack me with on mainstream news. Jones claims your cell phones are killing you. Jones claims there's chemicals in the water that are lowering your fertility and confusing your sexuality. Jones says there's black helicopters. Jones says there's a world government. Jones says the EU is unelected. It is. On and on and on. And everything we're saying is out in the open. Kelly Prime's son Kyle was just 10 years old when he was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 2016. Five months later, Kyle's friend and classmate, Mason Ferruli, developed brain cancer. Two more kids at the school were diagnosed this year. The moms believe the recent increase in cancer cases could be caused by radiation from radio frequency or RF waves coming from this cell tower located on the elementary school campus. So think about how the LA Times and even Wired Magazine will admit there are thousands of studies that prove that wireless radiation, as it's intensified in its strength the last 30 years, and how many places it's emanating from, and especially the microwave millimeter waves. Cell phones operate as microwave transmitters and receivers, transceivers. Now what's a microwave do? It vibrates water, vibrates molecules. And 5G is an even more powerful form of microwave that even rattles it faster. That's what causes the heat, the friction of the molecules, and burns oxygen and carbon dioxide. You heard me right, 5G burns the atmosphere. Epstein pleaded guilty to soliciting prostitution in Florida in 2008 as part of a controversial deal. In a civil case against the government about that deal, one accuser says she took part in an orgy on Epstein's private island in 2002 with approximately eight other young girls who appeared to be under the age of 18. What may have happened here? Just because some people want to restrict views doesn't mean they have a right to do it. And see, once that happens, now you can shut down the details of Bill Clinton's best buddy and the pedophile island that we've been exposing. Prison guards working when Epstein apparently died by suicide may have falsified reports 
to make it look like they were checking in on Epstein when they were in fact not. I am now more suspicious than ever that this could be a homicide. People won't listen to me because I got too much data. And you imagine what this is like? Alex Jones called this years ago. Years ago, he was saying that they take a lot of famous people to this island and they have all these young girls that this guy hooks them up with. He was talking about this years ago. Now it is mainstream news.